Hi again then guys and welcome to another special projects replica build and this particular replica is of the more hardcore MC Stradale variant of one of my favourite cars, it's the only Maserati so far to be featured in the Gran Turismo franchise. I really hope that that changes in the future, because I love Maserati, they're one of my favourite brands, maybe even my favourite brand overall as far as their entire range put together. I've never seen a Maserati that I didn't like, and this particular one is one of my favourites, the Gran Turismo. Now, the MC Stradale is, of course, as we said, the more hardcore, more track-focused, faster, it goes without saying, version of the Gran Turismo. Now, as far as the visuals, we have made some changes, some quite significant ones. So we will do a quick run-through of that in the visual tuning garage. Then, of course, we'll cover the mechanical side of the setup. And then finally, as we always do, take it out to a racetrack. Now, as far as the visuals on this particular model, it's not a complicated setup to get, but we have made quite a few changes. So, just to run through those, for those who want to copy it. Now, for the body kit, or the aero kit, as they call it on the game, we have gone for the Type A setup, and basically that just gives you the more pronounced chin splitter on the front end. In a similar way, it's of course not exactly like an MC Stradale, but at least it's closer to it. As far as the flat floor, you do have the option of whether you want it or not. Now, I've opted to fit it, which may seem strange because, of course, it is a road car, and I stress a lot not making road cars feel too good. So why have I done that? Well, mainly, to be honest, it's for the visuals, because the Stradale has the chin splitter, it has the ducktail wing, it has that more pronounced rear bumper with the integrated exhausts into the diffuser, that kind of thing. So I wanted it to look authentic, and also, of course, the flat floor makes it more hardcore around the track. And also, significantly, it does change your PP level. So you'll need to decide whether or not you want that and adjust the mechanical side of things accordingly. Because if you don't fit it, your PP level will be different to the one that I've got. Now, as far as the rear wing, as I said, of course, we've got the ducktail, type A, special wing, it's very simple. And then as far as the rims, you could go for different ones if you want, because of course, as with most exotic cars, you can choose different wheels when you buy one. So there's no strict set that's the best, I wouldn't say, but I've gone for these Oz NV5H rims, because they have elements that are very similar to some of the real Stradale's wheels. They have this 10-spoke arrangement, kind of laid out in a chunky 5-spoke style, but with 10 small spokes. Plus they have that silver kind of chrome or stainless steel looking centerpiece which doesn't change colour regardless of the colour of the rest of the rim. Which again is similar to the real Stradale's wheels. So that's why I've gone for those. But of course if you want to go for different ones you can do that. And as far as the colour, for the body I've actually left it the white that comes with the car. Which I believe was called Bianco Eldorado. And, of course, it's white. There is only one white that comes with the car. You can change it if you want to, of course. And for the rims, as you can see, I've gone for ebony, which is a solid colour. Of course, a black. It's one of the darkest blacks in the game. And it comes from the Jaguar S-Type. So, that's it for the visuals. There's no race number, of course, because it is a production road car. And that's all I've done. You could change the colour, you could change the rims if you want to, etc. So, now we'll go over to the mechanical side of things and proceed with that side of it. Now, as far as this tune goes, I did look up the actual specs, of course, of the car. I did, thankfully, manage to find the gear ratios of the real Stradale as well. And that's always nice when you can do that, because it just makes it feel all the more authentic. And also kind of gives you an idea of what the actual Stradale could feel like were it on the game. Now, I've gone for sports soft tyres, because, again, it's a road car. But at the same time, you want it to feel a little bit better than stock. We've gone for the standard brakes... Because, again, it's not a race car. It's better, but nonetheless, it's not a race car. As far as suspension, we have lowered the ride height just a little to 110. Springs have increased slightly to 750 and 950. Dampers and anti-roll I've actually left on three, as you can see. And the reason for that is because that is stiffer than stock. And again, you don't want it to be completely unrelenting through the corners. It needs to have a little bit of suspension movement there. I've gone for neutral camber and toe, as I pretty much always do, so unless you specifically want those, 
I wouldn't really recommend that you need them. We'll come back to the gearbox in just a second. I've gone for the twin plate clutch upgrade because although you do have more power, you don't have a huge amount of power to deal with and torque, so you don't really need the triple plate. As far as the diff, we've gone for the lowest initial torque, highest acceleration and lowest braking. And I find that for most cars, especially front engine rear wheel drive ones, that gives you a nice mix of good handling when you want it to be, but also you can overcook it on the throttle and get the tail out if you want to. Not so much with a flat floor, but nonetheless, you can get the tail out on this car if you want to. As far as power, we do, as usual, have an oil change, so you need to bear that in mind because it will, of course, affect your power. Then, I'd recommend just lowering it to 99.9%, .9%, and that gets you to the real horsepower of the actual Stradale. And as far as the weight, you want to add, funnily enough, you'd probably expect it to be lighter, but it actually isn't, 20 kilos more to bring you up to 1,800 kilos, 1 1.8 tons, which is the same weight as the real car. And then I've opted to put that all the way to the front. You don't necessarily have to do that, that was just my personal thing. And incidentally, that gets you quite nicely to 520 pp, which as I said, will be different if you opt not to fit the flat floor. Now we are running, as I said, the real gear ratios. In order to get them, you'll need the highest auto setting, perhaps surprisingly for a car with a relatively modest 460 horsepower. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's a lot but you wouldn't have expected, or I wouldn't have, to need an auto setting that high to reach the car's gear ratios. But the real ratios are, as you can see, 3.21, 2050, 1440, 1110, 900, and 760, and then the real car's final drive of 3.29. So that's it for the replica, with a couple of bits of variation here and there if, if you want to, such as the ballast position or the choice of tyres. But now let's take out and prove the car around a track. Now, before we get to the car, you probably notice that we've got the race information on the screen, which we don't usually have. And the reason why I've done that, or at least for this video, is to see if you guys prefer it that way. Because I had a couple of comments over quite a long time frame requesting that. Basically, could you see the specs, lap time, speed, all that kind of stuff on screen? And that's fair enough. If you want to see that, I have no problem with it. So, as far as the car itself, the handling is of course better than stock. There's less body roll, it's more focused through the corners, but you can still feel the weight of course. It is, at the end of the day, a heavy car. It's also a quick one though, and although it's not necessarily designed for racing use, it's more of just a fun replica, you could potentially use it for that if you wanted to. Just be careful what kind of opposition you go up against, because of course it's not as powerful or as light as some other cars at that level. But overall, regardless of what you use it for, I hope you find it fun first and foremost, and yeah, potentially useful for racing or time trials as well. But that's it overall for this particular replica. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.